So their park jams, I mean, here's the thing, like, they would give a jam in rec centers, uh, parks, you know, outdoor parks, um, middle school gymnasiums, shit like that. And what they would do out in the parks is they would literally, you know, um, go in to a light post and tap in and grab the electricity off that light post to power their system. Now, their systems were not like going to Guitar Center or whatever and buying like a system. Like they were making stuff out of speakers that were left in abandoned cars. You know, they were building stuff out of the, the means that they had. They were figuring out all crazy ways to, um, you know, mix records. Because at the time, there weren't, like, commercially available DJ mixers, or they were super expensive, you know. So these dudes would figure out different ways. They'd use two stereo receivers, and they would... Um, you know, mix two records by turning the volume up on one as they turn the volume down on on another one, you know, stuff like that. Or they would um, plug one turntable into the left channel of a, mic of a stereo receiver and one into the right, um, you know, that controls like the pan of the signal from left to right. And they would use that pan to basically mix between the two, the two signals. So they figured out all these crazy ways to like, you know, get technology to do what they want. But they were tapping light posts. And, you know, the police largely looked the other way. They're like, here's all these kids not causing trouble, hanging out, having a good time, and they would just let them, let them, let them do it, you know. Because um, it kept them out of trouble, you know, and kept all these teenagers out of trouble. So, uh, as I said, the B boys or B girls, that stands for break boys and break girls, okay? Um, and that's very important. But Herc, you know, he's known for, if you want to kind of look at what he contributed other than like, you know, because what is hip hop? It's the break. It's like, it's the drums. It's, and that's what hip hop is. It's fucking, it fucking starts with drums. It starts with a loop. You know, and uh, Herc was the first to isolate that loop, isolate the break. First to, through his merry-go-round, be like, I'm going to just play this part of the record. Fuck the whack part. I'm just playing this part, the dope part. You know what I'm saying? Um, he also figured out, you know, he could take two copies of the same record and create a loop. So he could play, you know, um, you know, the Apache drum break on one side and then play it on on the other side um, and mix between that and just keep that break going forever. Now, again, mind you, this has become real important when we talk about Grandmaster Flash, but Herc was mad sloppy. Um, he didn't cue stuff in his headphones. He didn't have a lot of technique, but he figured out, you know, he could sloppily create a loop. Um, and a major thing here is he, you know, he was digging for non-popular records. He was looking for shit no one had, um, and that's a major part of, of hip-hop culture, right? Like, if Jay Dilla or DJ Premier or whoever, right, make a beat off of a certain sample, like, Herc, what Herc instilled is, like, you should look for something other than what someone's used. Like, you wanted to have the most exclusive break beats, you know, which are the, the break records, you know. Um, and there's a quote, you know, that Posh Hart said, simply by being so bold as to make previous music, musical history, the material for his own creation, Herc made the DJ and author the originator. He freed music from its old context and integrated it within the process of composition. This is mightily important. I mean, what are records and turntables meant for? Right? They're meant for you to sit on your ass and listen to the record as intended. Well, Herc defied that. He used records and turntables as the starting point. He used consumption of music as the starting point for the production of new music and culture. That's like fucking phenomenally genius, right? Like for, you know... 70, 80 years that preceded him, people just listened, consumed music made by record labels. And this dude decided and figured out how to make new music by extracting bits and pieces 
from that old music to create new music and culture out of it. You have to understand that's so revolutionary and evolutionary. There were people in like weird art movements that, you know, played with records and stuff, but it was real artsy fartsy shit, you know. Herc, what Herc did became mainstream, it became popular culture, you know, and that's why it's just so goddamn important. Um, you know, and he made DJs authors. He made it so beat makers could become authors, you know. And Rose says this, hip hop has always been articulated via commodities and get engaged in the revision of meanings of them. I mean, just look at turntables, right? Those are tools for music consumption. Now you can, you, you know, he, they, they figured out ways, these hip hop DJs, these teenagers, these kids, right? Figured out ways to use two turntables and some sort of apparatus, mixing apparatus between them to make, make music. So they rearticulated what a turntable means and what its function is, you know. Had Thomas Edison and, you know, Berlinger rolling in their friggin' graves, you know. Um, so I think that's major, major important. And then obviously the texts, you know, the commodities are records, you know, a record you're supposed to just sit and listen to, you know, and just consume and consume and listen to in the order as the tracks are laid out, you know, and the whole DJ mentality is like taking bits and pieces out of, from wherever, out of all order and putting them into a new order. So what's the importance of what? of her, what Herc did, you know. Number one, he changed how we listen to music or we're, we're supposed to, right? Like, for me, when I'm, when I'm out digging or, or, or looking at records, like, I'm not listening necessarily to record and being like, oh, I like this record, I wanna listen to it. I, I'm sometimes looking for like little four bar loops or little bits and pieces smaller than that that I can fucking do something with, that I can do something with as a DJ, that I can do something with, with a sampler, you know. Um, so when I listen to music, I'm listening for, I'm, I'm looking for my clay, you know. I'm looking for my paint um, or wh whatever, you know. Um, I'm not looking for something that, you know, is set in stone. I'm looking at something I can mold. You know, and so in that way, he changed how a lot of a lot of folks listen to music. Um, you know, isolating the break, bringing that to the foreground, bringing that to the people. Um, that was huge because his parties gave birth to all these other parties that tried to imitate what he did. And again, he he was finding this this edgy, non-mainstream, non-commercial music and giving it to the giving it to the people. Um, and a lot of times, you know, these, all these, these break beats, which is what we call them, you know, um, you know, uh, they were also, a lot of them were Latin joints. So a lot of stuff with like, or at least Latin vibes to them. So you'd have a lot of stuff with different type of instruments, maybe a clave, maybe, um, you know, congas or bongos or, or, or what have you. Um, but the important thing is, is within hip hop culture, he's he's you know, um, he's called the inventor. Like, it's really hard to pinpoint invention um, in hip hop culture because no one was really documenting it. You know, it wasn't like now where everything's on you know Twitter and TikTok and shit. No one was documenting really what was going on with these teenagers in you know one of the. Um, most hardest hit areas in the United States from deindustrialization and structural racism. No one was really documenting. They were focusing on the violence and stuff and no one was really looking at, at it. But in hip hop, like inventor is kind of um, bestowed onto someone if the culture largely agrees upon it, you know. And there's some people who contest this claim, uh, you know, um, but, you know, most Hip hop historians, hip hop heads, OG hip hop pioneers, legends, whatever you know, all kind of point to Cool Herc as like the the dude, the pioneer of of all this. <laughs>